You slipped through the fissure too, did you? You came for demon souls? Or to save this land and be remembered as a hero? <laughs> Hunting for demons? Try one of the art stones. Now go. That is why you came, is it not? To this accursed boletaria. Demon Souls. Often cited as being the predecessor and origin of the Souls like genre. But what came before that? Some people reference Kingsfield and Shadow Tower. Knowing that I already had a copy of Shadow Tower, I decided to look into it myself. Already, from the introduction, we have some of the typical tropes of a Souls-like, Souls-born game. A dark, foreboding land, horrible creatures, and a bonfire. I wasn't really sure what to expect, considering that the game came out pretty early on in the PS1's lifespan. Because of this, I expect the game to be a lot easier than its more contemporary counterparts. Considering that there's less room for more mechanics, it seemed like it should be pretty easy. I was wrong. Because the PS1 didn't have any thumbsticks, Game designers had to find different ways to move around in a 3D space. A pretty common way was to use the shoulder buttons, however the way that Shadow Tower used its shoulder buttons was not the way that I was expecting, so I sidestepped when I thought that I was going to look down. It's a shame, but it's something that I guess we just sort of dealt with back in the day. I'm not so sure if it would have made the game hard at the time because that's what we were expecting. However, that does not mean that the game was any easier beyond its control scheme. In this first room you encounter a couple of jellies, which would typically be pretty easy first enemy encounters in any given RPG. Not in a From Software game. They deal poison damage, and you have no way to heal poison at this point. Needless to say, because this is the first room and this is a PS1 game, there's absolutely no chance of any kind of checkpointing going on. Meaning that I had to sit through the introduction video several times, which I would like to point out is unskippable. I've skipped it for your sake, but I had to sit through it about 20 times. After dying a few times, I decided to check out the options menu and the character info menu. Now, it's got a lot of the typical RPG Souls-like stuff that you'd expect. It's got equipment, and items, consumables, all that. Uh, sadly, it's all in quite pixely Japanese, so I sort of struggled to read it, and I struggled to translate a lot of it. However, it's pretty impressive that it has a lot of that stuff there, considering how early on the game came out. Sadly, it didn't really reveal or illuminate anything to me, so I had to continue on in my slog. I decided to just run ahead because that's how I play every Souls-like game. And I found 
what might be the first illusory wall and a horrible skeleton. <sighs> to hit any of the targets, you need to balance your camera up and down and left and right to try and actually square the target right in the middle, which is pretty tricky, um, especially when they're just doing like all their best hits on you anyway. Uh, there's there's quite a lot of varied monsters and, and stuff in this game, and the atmosphere is pretty good because there's no music, just the sound of you walking and distant sounds coming to get you. Uh, it's a game that I wouldn't play without an FAQ, just like pretty much every Souls-like game. You need the internet to help you beat it, which I'm not sure how people would have done back in 1995. But here we are. Because the game seems so obtuse and bizarre, I decided to go out and buy Kingsfield and Kingsfield 2 and Shadow Tower the Abyss. Um, Shadow Tower the Abyss is only being released in Japan. I believe that Kingsfield 1 was also only released in Japan and Kingsfield 2 had been released in the West as Kingsfield 1. So very confusingly, both cases just say Kingsfield and they both look like more or less the same game, only on the spine of Kingsfield 2, it says Kingsfield 2. So when I took it home, I looked at the case and I thought, did I just buy the wrong thing? And it took me a while to realize that, no, that's just how it is. So let's have a look at Kingsfield, the place where it all began. Kingsfield was released in Japan on December 16th, 1994, just under a fortnight after the PlayStation was actually first released. The game is full 3D and first person, which is pretty big for the time. This is the tail end of 1994. The effects of Doom are still being felt, so to have an actual big 3D world is pretty impressive and the game did all it could to show it off. One of the first things I noticed was that Kingsfield has a score, making it a little less intimidating than Shadow Tower, making it that one step away from the Demon Souls sort of vibe. It's still incredibly hard though. And as you can see, there was actually an illusory wall in this game, so they've been there since the very beginning. Something else notable about this game is the fact that there is health, magic, stamina, and magic cooldown. The stamina is represented in a power cooldown bar, basically every swing that you take requires you to reload that bar. Uh, perhaps later on in the game, other weapons, or if you improve somehow, maybe it doesn't require so much of a cooldown. I never made it there. It was easier to find friendly NPCs in this game too, and I could sense that they were trying to create more of an immersive world rather than an obtuse world. However, the limitations of the very early PS1 made it so that things were quite staggered. So far from just looking at Shadow Tower and Kingsfield, I feel like a lot of the tropes of the Souls-like game actually originated from hardware limitations. Really hard enemies, sparse foreboding landscapes. It feels like a lot of that was to make up for the fact that they just simply couldn't put a lot in at the time, and then eventually it just 
created this atmosphere which a niche fan base really liked and so the company continued to make that sort of game. At least that's just my impression. It's also worth mentioning that in this game, instead of saving at bonfires, you save at a more traditional Christian cross. As I didn't get too far into the game, I, I'm not really sure what the implications of this are. However, it seems that it's just a very typical knights and god sort of affiliation. All in all, it felt a lot more accessible than Shadow Tower did, and if I had a bit more free time, I could probably actually get into this game and go ahead and beat it. Uh, again, because it's only in Japanese, I would need to take a lot of time going through reading and translating the pixely Japanese. But I could definitely get into it. So from here, I naturally decided to move on to Kingsfield 2 to see what the West was experiencing as their first foray into this mad, mad world. As previously mentioned, a lot of the information about Kingsfield 2 is just referring to the game as Kingsfield. Um, I guess that people in Japan just sort of understood? I don't know, they're only a year apart, so there must have been a couple confused people, not just myself. Uh, but it meant that it was easier to export to the West as being Kingsfield 1. Kingsfield 2 does not mess around, it just dumps you straight into this horrible world and then proceeds to murder you. Again and again. So far, out of Shadow Tower, Kingsfield, and then this, Kingsfield 2 was probably my least favourite. I felt like I was just dying at every turn, and there was absolutely no sense of progress. At least in Shadow Tower, I could run through and find weapons and eventually find a save point. Kingsfield, I could find a save point early on and really explore about. Kingsfield 2, every five steps I was just getting killed, and usually the kills were just one hits on me, which is just insane, what is this, Dark Souls? So let's talk about the heads up display. As you can see, everything's been streamlined into one box, and there is now a compass which is better than nothing, but still considering the fact that everything is just stretched textures not a massive help but it's nice to know that there's some form of navigation going on that being said the souls like genre is somewhat popular due to the fact that navigation is taken out and it's all down to unique level design and really feeling the environment but as I just said, this is all stretched textures, so it's kind of hard to have any kind of relation to the world that you're in anyway. I could find one friendly NPC, but he was about as useful as a cocktail umbrella and a typhoon. But I guess that's the way in the Souls game. Having experienced a thousand person massacre all on my own, I decided that I had enough with Kingsfield 2.
Besides, Shadow Tower had more of a Demon Souls vibe anyway, so that felt like it was a natural predecessor to Demon Souls more than the Kingsfield series. Okay, well, they're talking about darkness. There's torches. Ooh, this looks pretty good. Something's moving. You know what? This this kind of uh, this kind of makes me think of uh, Dark Souls 2. This this reminds me a lot of the trailer for Dark Souls 2, when he's going into the giant uh, skeleton. Yeah, this is starting to feel a bit more like the uh, natural progression of things. See, we've got torches, just like Dark Souls 2. And what? A gun! Handgun! What? Um... Okay. And there's a jazz thing, a jazz tower. What? What? Okay then. Needless to say, I was entirely wrong about Shadow Tower series relating more to Demon Souls. Perhaps Shadow Tower 1 does, but something happened between the two games. Now on the PS2, time has progressed and the market seems to be different, and it seems that From Software just took one of their old IPs and some of its lore and applied it to more contemporary gameplay styles. I looked it up because this was pretty bewildering to me, but basically a lot of the characters and themes from Shadow Tower 1 reappear in Shadow Tower 2. Uh, it seems that you are playing centuries ahead from the original installment and on an expedition you come across this mysterious tower in the woods. Which, I guess the woods are pretty strange themselves, seeing as they're filled with these weird demon baby things. And, yeah. It seems like you go into the tower and ascend, just like in the original Shadow Tower, but it's been centuries apart, so you've got guns and stuff. But you know what? Time is convoluted in the Soul series. Nothing is linear. Generally, I think if I had played this game when it first came out and I was a kid playing my PS2, I would have I would have absolutely adored this. This looks like entirely my thing from when I was a kid in those days. Um, again, now, if I get some more free time, I might invest some time into it. But sadly, this game broke my PS3. After having removed this game from my PS3, I can only play PS1 games on it now. So I'm gonna have to fix that because I can't play any PS3 games and I can't play any PS2 games. Oh dear, oh dear. But let's have a look at what we've got here. You've got a gun with very limited ammo and some kind of dagger thingy. You can pick up items and wear them just like in any of the other games. And there is a lot of darkness in this game. Tons of darkness. I guess very fitting of the name Abyss. Uh, you also have a little character display to show where you're holding your weapon and which weapon you're holding and you can shoot the limbs off your enemies. It's pretty good for a PS2 game. It's just not 
in the Soul series, it's it's very alien from the rest of the games, but I like it, and I think it's good to take risks with the games and with the lore that you have. There's no need to be so dogmatic about the world that exists, because when it comes down to it, making a new game with the same core concepts does not erase the previous game. You can still go back and play those games. So when people were upset with Dark Souls 2 changing things around, I, I don't see what the problem is. You just go back and play Dark Souls 1 if that's the game that you want to play. Likewise, with Sekiro making changes, if you're unhappy with the way that Sekiro plays, don't play it then. And then now, with Shadow Tower Abyss, sure, it doesn't fit into the typical standard of the series, but just go play the other ones. I think it's really important for creators to explore and to just express creativity and while I'm really excited for Demon Souls to be re-released I think it's important to keep mixing it up just keep seeing what you can do with the things that you have I would really love to see Shadow Tower getting revisited because out of all of these original games. The Shadow Tower games were my favorite, even though that one of them was just entirely different. I didn't get the rest of the Kingsfield games because there's about three or four more and I just... I Kingsfield 2 I think broke me. I, I think it was just so alienating and I could be spending ages doing that or, you know, I could read a book, I could study Japanese, or I could play the much, much more enjoyable Demon Souls, which is what I'm going to do. See ya.